Pleasant good morning. These devotions are brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands. I am Father Christopher Higgs, the assistant priest at St. Barnabas Parish, located in Nassau, Bahamas. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established a new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from John chapter 3, beginning on verse 7. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, We speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dr. Henry Joet, an English preacher, was talking to a sailor about sailing the ship, and he asked him, Will you explain to me the phenomenon of the wind? The seaman replied, I don't know what you mean, sir. Joet persisted, Well, how do you explain the wind which propels your ship? The sailor responded, I don't know anything about the wind, but I can hoist the sail. Then Joet writes, In the same manner, the Christian may not be able to explain the movement of the Holy Spirit, but he can experience the Spirit's power in their own life and ministry. My beloved, we have to realize that we cannot do it by ourselves. Life and ministry takes teamwork, and we have to yield to the wind. That is what life in the Spirit is all about. In our scripture reading for today, Jesus is talking about being born again and the necessity of the Holy Spirit in our life. God puts his hand on the tiller, which I've learned is what steers the boat. We have to yield and trust God to allow him to choose the direction of the wind and the direction of our lives. If we want to really do God's will, we have to seek and yield to the, to the direction of the wind. We have to choose to surrender our will to God because he will never overrun or override our will. When Hudson Taylor went to China, he made the voyage on a sailing vessel. As it neared the channel between the southern Malay Peninsula, and the island of Sumatra, missionary heard an urgent knock on his stateroom door. He opened it, and there stood the captain of the ship. Mr. Taylor, he said, we have no wind. We are drifting toward an island where the people are heathen, and I fear they are cannibals. What can I do? asked Taylor. I understand that you believe in God. I want you to pray for wind. All right, Captain. I will, but you must set the sail. Why, that's ridiculous. There's not even the slightest breeze. Besides, the sailors will think that I'm crazy. But finally, because of Taylor's insistence, the captain agreed. Forty-five minutes later, the captain returned and found the missionary still on his knees and said, You can stop praying now. We've got more wind then we know what to do with. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to act when we hear God speak. 
In the book of Acts, Paul and the apostles are always guided by the Holy Spirit and do what the Holy Spirit prompts. When the Holy Spirit says to go one direction, they go. When the Spirit says to go another, they go. Acts 16 verses 6 to 7 tells us that Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When the Spirit leads, we have to go not tomorrow or next week or next month. We have to go now, today. One of the most important words of the New Testament, according to the version that you use, is today or now. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 tells us that, I will tell you today is the day of God's favor. Today is the day of salvation. Too often we hear the Spirit speak and we say to ourselves that I'm going to do it later or after a while. The problem is we never get around to doing it. Remember when Jesus said to a man, follow me, and his response was, I will follow you, but let me go and bury my dad. That was a great excuse. Another said to him, I'll follow you, but let me go and say goodbye to my family. A good excuse, but it is delay and procrastination. One of the most important words in the Bible is today. We need to gain the urgency of now. It is our willingness to act when God speaks, to live the unexpected adventure of serving God and following wherever His Spirit leads. There is no better time than today to yield to the wind. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. And if possible, please share with a friend.